This, this, this is the Ben Herman Show. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Ben Herman Show. I've got an amazing speaker and author in our presence today, Mr. Mitch Taylor. How's it going, man? Hey, Ben. Good to see you. Good to see you as well. Yeah. So we are here at Mobile Entertainment Expo, yes. also photo booth Expo, which yep. is always an exciting time of year in it our is. industry. It is. Um, and you're speaking actually tomorrow with, yes. along with me as well yes. uh, on the same day. Yes. And um, you're dropping a book. Yes. Uh, the book is actually already dropped previously. This is my first keynote for it. Lyrics to Live Life By. Mm, love it. Which is the stories and insights behind the music and the songs and the lyrics that you play, or maybe some songs that you don't even know, that you haven't heard of. But that's what I'm hoping to pull out tomorrow, is help us understand the life lessons that these lyrics are really speaking to and the artists really wanted you to get. Mm, love it, love As it. a listener, so. Do you mind giving us a little preview of kind of what people can expect tomorrow? Yeah, um, different, Different uh, songs um, every, from all different genres. One of them I, I'll open. I'll tell you my opener tomorrow. The opener tomorrow is Noise by country artist Kenny Chesney. Mm -hmm. Now, some people may be familiar with country genres, some are not. But the lyrics of the song are 24 hour television, get so loud that no one listens, sex and money and politicians talk, talk, talk. But there really ain't no conversation. Ain't nothing left to the imagination. We're trapped in our phones and we can't make it stop. Mm. This noise. That's the chorus. That's the lyrics. Yeah. And so to me, I try to help them understand. Fast forward 100 years from now, it's 2124, right? Everything you work so hard to get is gone. Mm -hmm. Someone else is living in your house. You're dead and buried with your family and relatives. You know, your car that you worked so hard to get, the Tesla or whatever you wanted to buy is scrap metal. So when you realize that everything is noise, well then what's important? And so we're breaking it down. It's pretty heavy shit, deep. right? Very deep. Very <laughs> I hope deep. I could swear. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> It's deep, it's pretty heavy shit, but that's the thing that I think we as DJs, we gloss over way too much. We, what we wanna be about the party, and there's nothing wrong with the party. Mm. Please don't misunderstand me. There's nothing wrong with the party. Mm. But the party has purpose, and the party has meaning, and there are moments that matter that are beyond the party, right? Absolutely. And so that's, that's really, you know, I tell brides and grooms all the time when I'm sitting down with them, I say, you know, if it wasn't for this one piece, I wouldn't even be in entertainment anymore. Mm, <laughs> I feel like it's my calling Yeah. yeah. because too often we treat it as just another announcement uh -huh. or just another event on Saturday another or event, Friday yeah. or yeah. whatever and not realizing that this is their only. The biggest, right? Yeah, yeah. the biggest they have or their only wedding, mm -hmm. hopefully, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> when you perform for a couple, and I've done this, where the bride is literally not even dancing with her dad, mm -hmm. but her dad is there on an oxygen tank because he literally has days to live. And when he passes nine days after that wedding, but you were able to give them a moment that they could share together with all their friends and family, that to me is what I live for. Helping, yeah. helping the light bulbs go off in the couple's heads to see that, yes, this is all about you, but there are moments at play that are bigger or just as important, I should say, maybe not bigger, but just as important. Mm. This is their opportunity as a son or as a daughter to turn around, if they had a good childhood, to turn around and say thank you. 
to their parents. Yeah. For raising them, for putting up with their for 20, yeah, right. <laughs> 20 plus years. <laughs> I, I always say that like that to a, to a couple and uh, one groom said antics and I'm like, that's a way better word than what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah. Are you a father? Do you have kids? Yes, sir. I yeah. have two kids. So you're speaking from experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I yeah I have, a, I have a photo of my daughter tomorrow on the slot on the on the decks and uh, yeah it's uh, my son's 21 my daughter's 17 and uh, life moves fast my friend mm -hmm. absolutely you know what you had mentioned about uh, you working an event where father was in the wheelchair in an mm -hmm. oxygen tank it triggered a memory for me I had DJ a couple's wedding the event planner actually reached out and said hey you know uh, the bride's father is in the hospital finding cancer and is hoping to make it to the wedding day, mm -hmm. but it's not looking very promising. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do behind the scenes is the sister is going to record a speech on video that we can then project mm -hmm. on our on our system. So they added on the visual package, yeah. we donated it. We're like, yeah, we'll just give yeah. it to you. And sadly he didn't make it and we were able to you know play that video and there was not a dry eye in nope. that reception it first off. And even though I had no connection to this family at all, it was just so touching. And just to know this is what we get to do. We get to yeah. be a par part of not only creating memories, because I know that's kind of a cliche that we all now state mm -hmm. as we're in the business of creating memories. We get to actually have real impact in people's lives, in families' lives. Yes. And I look at it this way. The photographer is capturing the moments, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They can go back and edit something in Photoshop if they screw up. True. Your caterer can go back and fix a plate of food. We're live. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There are no take twos. Yeah. So if you butcher something, you can't say, hey, can you back outside and screwed up your name? Can we do that again? Yeah. Not going to happen. Right. So we put in a lot more time and effort most DJs should put in a lot more time and effort mm -hmm. into their events because there is only one shot. They don't have an opportunity to make it up. And so that's crucial on those moments because how much better are those photos going to look? How much more emotion will they feel on the wedding video, right? if the moments are presented how they should be presented mm -hmm. or given their proper due. Yeah. Uh, Scott Favor, you know Scott Favor, I think. I don't think so, no. no? Oh my gosh, I can introduce you. Uh, great man, wonderful talent. He's actually uh, doing his breakfast with the Game Master tomorrow mm. uh, out of Arizona. Uh, Scott's an indelible mark on our industry, he's great. Uh, so Scott is, is known for saying, and he taught me this years ago, you know, uh, know your client, right? Mm -hmm. And I take that to be this, nothing about a wedding should be fake. You know, Absolutely. maybe yeah. the flowers, but. <laughs> 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 or the nails, yeah. whatever. There you um, go. But, uh, but yeah, nothing about a wedding should be fake. So don't sit here and do this, you know, over the top presentation for a father daughter dance or announce a dad if the dad's not there or she doesn't have a great relationship with her father mm -hmm. or vice versa or whatever the situation is, right? So yeah. we have to know our, cl our clients, so. Absolutely, absolutely. When it comes to sharing the conversations pre-wedding, yeah. let's say during a consultation yeah. about couples exploring or gauge couples exploring yeah. your services, yeah. how do you portray the value besides the equipment and the announcements and the music organization and you know, music programming in regards to those deeper moments? So it's just a, it's a conversation, you know? Most of the sales consults I do, I don't use a fancy PowerPoint. Uh, it's strictly a conversation just like we're having today mm -hmm. about their day Two most important questions to me are, how did you hear about us? And some people say, well, why are you asking that? I've already got that on my planning form, on the questionnaire they filled out, right? Well, they may have heard about you from the knot or Google, but if you dig deeper, were they a past attendant in a wedding that you performed? Or mm -hmm. did they also hear about you from the venue? Or, you, you know what I mean? They like, usually tend to, in that inquiry box, right? Yeah. They usually pick, tend to 
say the last thing that they found out yeah. about Elon, right? Yeah. So <laughs> you want to know are there any other triggers that you can attribute that to, yep. right? And so I always ask that. And then the second question I always ask is, what do you know about us as a company? Like, because I want to know where they're at in the process. Are they colder? We just saw, found you on Google and called, mm. right? Or we saw you at so-and-so's wedding and you were amazing, you know? So you got to take the temperature of the lead, right? And yeah. find out where that's at. Uh, and then actually in the consult, in the, in the sales call, whatever you want to call it, on Zoom or in person, doesn't really matter the medium, but it's just, what do they need? You know, and a lot of people, oh, I just need a DJ. Okay, get that. You'd think <laughs> you need a DJ. So what's been your experience with DJs? What have you seen that you've liked, disliked? Are you looking for someone that is more MC focused, someone more DJ focused, right? Are you wanting a mixed DJ? Do you care if they mix? Do you want, you know, hyper mixing and or now some sampling MC, or, right? you know, yeah. yeah, it all depends on what they like, you know? And so we had that conversation, we get a little deeper. And one of my favorite questions I ask is, if you could be a fly on the wall as your guests are driving home from your reception, what do you want them to say? Mm, that's a good one. Because that speaks to the outcome that they're going to get. You know, they as consumers, they've never shopped for entertainment before, probably, more mm -hmm. than likely. And so you sympathize with them on that. So listen, this is hard. <laughs> and I say it like this, Ben. I, I tell them, I say, you're about to hand a live microphone to a complete stranger <laughs> in front of a hundred of your closest friends and family. Yeah, that's how I feel every time during speeches or toasts. What could go wrong? I'm like, please don't. <laughs> I'm trusting you with this microphone. Please don't wrong? drop the microphone. Yeah. Please don't drop it. Right, and so, <laughs> but we have to sympathize with that because that is what they are going through. Yeah. And they've never hired someone before. And so this is difficult. So sympathize with them and then get them to open up about what they're looking for, for entertainment, for a DJ, for a photo booth, whatever that experience is they're looking to create, and then have the conversation around what their needs are. And, what, and if you can deliver, and if you're not the right fit, then don't, don't ask for the business, in my opinion. Yeah. Because uh, you're doing them a disservice if you're taking the business and you're truly not a right fit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway, just- Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Qualify the lead. Yeah. Make sure that they're actually a good fit. Of course. Absolutely. What would you say in regards, let's say, so there's plenty of DJs that are going to watch this, listen to us on sure. a podcast that don't feel the most confident in the sales pillar of their business. What are three points of advice tips that you felt, man, when I did this or these three things, it was a huge game changer for my business. First thing I would study, study sales, you know, I have studied with Jeffrey Gittimer, uh, mm -hmm. who was America's uh, number one, is the author of America's number one best-selling sales book of all time, Little Red Book of Selling. Mm -hmm. Do I agree with everything Jeffrey's done in his life? Absolutely not, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but I think you could learn from anybody, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. Uh, so be a student of sales, take care of your couples, know if you're a right fit or not, have those conversations and realize that don't get so caught up in, well, I gotta close this deal, or, you know, approach every single wedding consult you have like a blank piece of paper. Mm. Shut off all the distractions, turn off your phone, you know, and focus on them. When you blank slate it, then you can truly be present with them and able to serve them better. Absolutely. So blank slate, study sales. Third, I, I think I, I've already said this though, is I'm trying to think of something else I can give you. Don't ask for the business unless you truly feel in your heart of hearts you're a right fit. Yeah, yeah. Because how many times have we gone to a wedding, and I know I have, because this is, Lord knows I've done this, where you, you wake up in the morning and you go to the wedding and you're like, man, I don't really want to do this one. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because you may have discounted it because you needed the money or, it may have been a client that just was not a right fit. You yeah, clashed a yeah, little bit, absolutely. you know? It's okay to say no. It's okay to fire a client. I fired a client before. 
totally have. Mm. Refund of their money because in the middle of the process, I realized not a right fit anymore. You know? Absolutely. So yeah, those would be my pieces of advice. Yeah, love it. I think the, the clean slate was a really good piece of advice because I think about what, what I tried to mentor folks on is go into the sales conversation without any motive, right? And truly be at service for mm -hmm. that person. Have their best interest in mind versus our own, right? right. Um, because a lot of times, even like you mentioned, if they're not gonna be a good fit, you trying to still convince them to book you, you, you may regret it later on anyways, yeah. right? Yeah, So and, and don't sell serve mm, you know I, I see people all the time now but there's another side to that don't sell but serve but i truly feel because there's some people that will just go through and never ask for the business <laughs> true <laughs> okay. yeah so there's um two sides of the spectrum there's two here. sides of that yeah. spectrum you know <laughs> for sure. so you have to ask for the, if you truly feel in your heart of hearts and at the end of everything one of my favorite transitions that i i go with and this is after we've already talked about, you know, their planning, their day, the flow, those kind of details, uh, what they're looking for, all of that. And I, you know, I go through, depending on the company I'm selling for, because I actually also, I, I am actually a remote inside salesperson. Mm -hmm. uh, people can hire me to sell for them right now. So. Oh, that's incredible. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we, might, we might need to talk. I started, <laughs> I started doing that. Um, and it's been a great thing for me. I have one opening left right now, which is ironic. Gotcha. We're going to talk about it tomorrow. Oh, he's a good salesman. Sensor, uh, urgency, and scarcity. I'm great. just saying great that skill. it's the truth. <laughs> I, it's, I'm not trying to sell it. It's the God's honest truth. One well, of my favorite transition is, I know we haven't talked pricing yet, but what do you think about everything we've talked about so far? And you say it in a conversational way like that. So now you being a student of sales, and sales mentoring other people, you know what I just did. Mm -hmm. I eliminated the product, person, and place objection. Objections, yep. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what I just did. Yeah, yeah. So if, if it's only price, I can nail it down to price as an objection. It's easier to overcome. Absolutely. You get a much better success and ratio of closing the deal if you eliminate the other objections first. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did on the sales, you know, tutor side, if you will, right? The sales. Uh, trainer side, yeah. but asking that question allows you to find out where what they're thinking. You're taking their temperature at that point in time and seeing where they're at, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I believe you also run a multi-op, correct? I do, I have for years. So I've run, I started out DJing in Maine, my home state of Maine. I'm old, I started off in cassettes. <laughs> nice, I was vinyl. <laughs> Not cassettes. But well, I, I moved to vinyl. Yeah. I, my very first, one of my very first gigs was actually queuing up cassettes in the back in my car, bringing them in through the back door for the school dance and putting them in a cassette player, you know, mm. in play. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but then I moved on and did vinyl on Carnival Cruise Lines. Oh, cool. Uh, DJed for them for two years out of LA and Miami. Uh, so I, yeah, I run a, I ran a multi-op in Metro Detroit for a few years, for seven years actually. And then I ha had a solo in the UP of Michigan and then grew to a, a bigger, multi well, bigger for the UP, five to six uh, events a day, multi-op in the UP. And then now we're scaling back actually at this point right now, so. Oh, if I may ask, uh, what, what was the decision behind that? Behind oh, the, the decision reasoning. to scale back? Scale back, yeah. Um, focusing on other endeavors. Uh, awesome. Honestly, yeah. Uh, for me, it's about growing forward. Mm. I think we as entrepreneurs, we're always looking for that next challenge. Absolutely. You know? <laughs> and so, okay, I helped grow a, a multi-op from a small multi to a big multi in Detroit. And then I went and moved to somewhere no one knew my name and started out as a solo and then had a great success at that. And then moved to a multi and had great success with that for a decade. And now I'm needing another challenge. Like, what's next? Do you know what I mean? What is next? Well, I, I've moved on to a few different endeavors. I'm a catering sales manager and event coordinator for a local property, a uh, beautiful local property overlooking Lake Michigan in my town. Nice. Uh, which also funnels business then to Tailored Weddings, my mm. wedding and event yep. company. <laughs> kind of double smart. dipping. Yeah, but great. It's smart, right? Yeah. Uh, my wife and I own four rental properties currently. So real estate was a move that we did. Uh, to help grow our portfolio and then selling for other you know event production companies nationally too is another move i made so yeah. amazing gotcha yeah. awesome well let me ask you this so in regards to the multi-ops yeah 
I personally have decided to delegate all order taking sales yep. uh, to our team. Yep. Uh, so that way I can remove myself yep. from those conversations to then focus on hunting the whales, right? So going after bigger sales. One of my uh, remote inside sales oh, really? guys does that right now. That's oh, exactly nice, what awesome, awesome. I'm part of that other team that sells for him. Yeah. <laughs> If I may ask, uh, what is your what are your thoughts around delegating training a sales staff for a multi-op? I think it's smart to be able to do it. I think it's imperative that they still have the heart of a servant, mm. that they take your lead and they represent you properly, that you have to train them on you know, your core values and your philosophy, and obviously all the data points of your company in regards to you know, package structure and pricing and talent and Absolutely. terms and, and all the things, right, uh, like that. It's important that you have your team trained so that they can communicate effectively because too often I think we just say, oh, well, yeah, Sally's gonna call us here and talk about her wedding and then just see if she'll book and this is our packages and, yeah. well, wait a minute. <laughs> it's kind of like, <laughs> you know, that's not training. <laughs> that's throwing you to the wolves. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, how some folks decide to, you know, they're training for their multi uh, multi-op event staff is summer. Hey, come follow me, shout on me for yes. a few events and then go off and do your own event. Yeah. So I, I have a five fully. step sales process that I developed mm. and have in my book sales for event pros. And so I made sales an acronym and it's search, approach, learn, explain, solve. Mm. And so search phase is pretty much ahead of the sales consult. When a lead comes in, what information can you glean from the lead that came in? Time of day, email address, venue, proximity of when they're inquiring to when their event date is. Mm, yep. You know, uh, is it a name you've seen before? How many people? You know, there's all kinds of clues. What is their email address? What's their phone number exchange? Yeah. There's all these kinds of clues that they give you. But we as DJs, because we're not trained salespeople, we don't think to take a look at that stuff. Yeah. And realize that everything they give you speaks. You know, you can Google your clients. They Googled you. <laughs> Why should you not be prepared? Or the ending of an email address, a Hotmail versus a Gmail, right? Yes, yep. the, the, all that, or the, or the wedding email address, you yeah. know? All those things speak. Mm -hmm. to what they are communicating. And you just have to know how to decipher. You know, the approach phase is important. You know, how you're approaching the meeting. Blank slate is one of those things that I use, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so there's little things in there that I feel in my book really outline that for a company that needs it, so. Yeah, I love it. If I may ask, uh, in regards to that last spot that, yeah. uh, you know, you're looking to potentially join, or is it, is it essentially join a team or? Yeah, remote? essentially, it, okay. it's a remote inside salesperson thing. Um, and it's gotta be a right fit, right? I, <laughs> I'm of the age right now where it's like, eh, I gotta be a connection, I gotta feel a right fit for me to jump on a team. I already, uh, I had another, a third company I was working with, but it wasn't a right fit. Mm, I see. And so I had to basically say, listen, I love you guys, but this is not, yeah. <laughs> this is not a right fit. You well, know? I think, uh, you know, again, multi-op owners, but also just yeah. DJ companies yeah. are, are watching and going to listen to this podcast yeah. episode. Uh, do you mind uh, listing out the criteria of what you're looking for and what so would make a good fit? An ideal client for me is a, multi, a smaller multi-talent company, typically a smaller boutique multi-talent company. The owner hates sales or they suck at sales, <laughs> point blank, <laughs> but they still want to make sure their clients are taken care of. They want to make sure that their emails are getting returned, their phone calls are being taken care of. And so we set it up where, you know, I have a Gmail with that company address and a Calendly and, you know, a phone number if they don't have their own Vonage or whatever system, right, mm -hmm. they wanna use. So we just make, make sure it looks exactly like I am in that state, you know what I mean? And I'll Google the venues in advance and look at the venue notes inside of their CRM and everything else to be able to speak educatedly about it when I'm on the phone with a client that I got to do my own research, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In my search phase. Uh, and so, yeah, the owner that's, you know, hate sales or isn't really wanting to work in that space anymore, you know, that's my, 
my ideal target uh, client I'm looking for. Gotcha. And without mentioning an actual price. Yeah, it's all good. Uh, how, how does the compensation structure work? Is it commission based? Is it? It's a monthly fee to okay. reserve me, which I think is fair, uh, considering that there's only one of me. And then it's a percentage on commission as well. Gotcha, gotcha, yeah. perfect. And uh, how does a person reach out to you if they want to? Uh, MitchTaylor.net. That's my website. So awesome. Uh, go to MitchTaylor.net. You can find me online. Uh, you could at MitchTaylor on Twitter. You can at the MitchTaylor. Uh, is all my socials right now. I got a social media girl doing all that, and we record a lot of our sales calls as well. That's something else I would encourage DJs to do. Mm -hmm. Just like you record your mixes, Absolutely. right? You record yeah. your mixes. You find out where the train wrecks were. Right, same thing. You can watch back a Zoom call with a client mm. and then you can see things that you didn't pick up on mm. where all of a sudden their facial expression changed when you said something. Absolutely. Either positively or negatively and then you're like, oh, I shouldn't have said that, you know? <laughs> but at the moment you're thinking this is great, you know, and you go with it, but. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. yeah, I think for multiple reasons, it's smart to record phone calls. One is for quality assurance, right? Yep. Second is to be able to study yourself to figure yes. out ways to better your craft. And then third, future proofing your, your business in the case that you decide to hire a sales staff. Yep. Now you have recordings that you can actually pass on to them for training purposes as well. Well, and I'll give you a fourth, uh, maybe a fourth or fifth. Mm -hmm. The If you record the sales calls, then you could have your talent watch the sales call and they then get a better feel for the couple they're going to represent mm, that's at smart. the event. Yeah. Right? Definitely. That's great. Because a lot of times your talent walks into the into the event blind. <laughs> yeah. You know, the old age old, old adage, I lived this in Method Detroit, where a limousine pulls up to the, the venue and the venue's got like five ballrooms and there's five weddings going on at the same time and there's five DJs in the lobby and they turn <laughs> to each other, is she mine? <laughs> <laughs> you know, they don't know, yeah, yeah. right? Uh, and so having your DJs be prepared, how much better is that going to make their performance and how much better is the review gonna be mm. if they're on their A game? So that's one. And then the other one is, what if when you were talking to them in the sales call, they talked about their partner? or they talked about their dad. And now because you're doing this in a conversational style, it's not gonna be like uh, trepidation with them on a, on, you know, if you're just interviewing them direct, right? So now what if you could take what she said about her father when you asked her about her father and incorporate that into the instrumental moments or parts only yeah. of the father-daughter dance song. So now yeah. you can multi-purpose that there's another two, two extra ways to do it. Yeah. If that wasn't worth the entire interview, I don't know what else is. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been a, uh, an honor to, to speak with you, Mitch. Yeah, and uh, let people know, like, what books uh, do you have that people can find out more about? Where can they order them and how they can... You can grab them right on Amazon uh, or, or MitchTaylor.net. Uh, sales for Event Pros is my sales book. Uh, and then uh, Lyrics to Live Life by... It's actually... I think it's my, I've done, I don't know how many presentations, spoken all over the world, from Adelaide, Australia, to Canada, to cruise ships, and uh, I think this next one, Lyrics to Live Life By, is my favorite one so far. Mm. Yeah. Love it. So grab the book on Amazon. Yeah, and we're certainly looking forward to seeing you at MEX, and then yeah. uh, hopefully at future conferences as well. Yeah. So definitely make sure to, to track this guy. Awesome. Thank you so much, Thanks, man. Ben, appreciate, appreciate it. it. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah.